the teams what's up brandon dempsey here what's going on good morning everybody how are you great to see you on this terrific tuesday i hope that your week is going great how are you doing how are you holding up with the christmas crazies going on during this week in preparation for all of our christmas services and everything else that's happening it's been a lot and i hope that you guys are doing well what's up at householder and who else is on with us right now if you would do us a favor and swipe and invite all of our worst team training friends thank you so much for coming in and watching on periscope and also facebook live as well as listening to our podcast the audio playback on both iheart and also itunes and i hope that you guys are doing great let's get this going today we are talking about do you believe what you sing as we head into the christmas time what's going on td songs another great friend on periscope and member here at worship team training university as we move into December, uh, well, we're already like here, right? We're already midway through December. But as we move into our Christmas season, our Christmas Sundays, if you will, uh, what do those look like for you in your church? Uh, we sing a lot of the Christmas songs and we look at the words, but how often do you really look at the words that you sing, whether it be Christmas or normal Sunday? Hi, my name is Brandon Dempsey. I am a follower of Jesus and CEO of WorshipTeamTraining.com. And what do we do? Well, we do workshops for you and your worship team, worship leader, pastor. We come to you on a Friday or Saturday, and we put on a hands-on training for you and your worship team to cover instrumental, vocal, worship leading concepts and training. So invite us out. Go to WorshipTeamTraining.com slash workshops. And we also, have you heard, we have a mentoring program as well. We walk with you week in and week out surrounded around a book and curriculum to walk with you as a personal mentor as a 10-week program. You can find that at worshipteentraining.com slash mentoring. And also our fantastic university program, which has really been lifting off and we are so excited. Uh, we are, well, the numbers are going up, 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 up with the members coming in. So thank you so much for all you Worship Team Training University members. What is this? It's an on-demand membership site. Instead of trolling through all these free articles and videos that really just get you nowhere, you can join us for a small fraction, small, small, small fraction, costly uh, cost for your budget each month. And you can enjoy over 800 articles, videos, webinars, devotional downloads, special music training, as well as courses that we're putting up for next year and specials that we have along the way every month. It's just for you, and you can check that out at wttu.co. And if that's not enough, if you would like to get a free trial membership, all you need to do is email me, and I'll send you the link. That's Brannon, that's spelled B-R-A-N-O-N, at wttu.co. Check it out. Let's go ahead and get to this week's content because we are talking about this on our university site. So for all of our members, thank you so much and welcome. You can see the new article full post as you are scrolling through this video in the show notes and you'll see the link where it will say uh, members article. So let's talk about it. Do you believe the words that you sing? How often is it that when your singers as a worship team get up there each week and as they're singing, how often is it that they forget the words? Is that a commonality? It, did it happen this past Sunday? Of course it does. It happens every time that we sing. But if we fail to remember words that we sing each week, and by the way, these are songs that we know, right? These are songs that we know that we've been singing probably 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And what do you mean you still don't know the first verse to Amazing Grace? What's up with that? So if you can't remember the words, then I would think how often is it that we actually look at the lyrics for themselves, not just memorizing them. But if we can't memorize them, I don't think we're really even looking at the words that we're singing. So this week's guest on Thursday, Mark James, Vineyard worship leader from across the pond in the UK, is coming over to join us this Thursday. You don't want to miss that. It's in the show notes right here. Get that link. And also tomorrow, we're going to be having a Christmas music webinar arranging how to arrange and spice up your December worship music, all by our good friend Mark Cole, who's coming on the program. That is a free webinar. All you need to do is go to our site, wttu.co, and if you got our newsletter from the, the university, 
then you can get in for free. And if you want to get it free, again, just email me and I'll send you the free link. It's that simple. Again, Brannon, B-R-A-N-O-N at W-T-T-U dot C-O. And we have some other goodies for you as well. But as we talk about Christmas, as we talk about worship music, what's happening in your church? Go ahead, hit us up right now. Guys watching by Periscope and Facebook Live, what's going on? If you guys would also, if you haven't done already, please swipe and invite, let everybody know what is up. So I ask you the question, how often is it that your singers forget the words? How often is it that they remember and actually look at the words that they're singing? What's up, Mika, sweetheart, how you doing? Awesome, awesome friend here on Periscope and member at WTTU. And Chris, what's up, my brother, on Facebook Live? Good to see you, man, as always. We, gotta, we have some more talking that we need to do, I know. A lot of stuff. The struggle is real. What's up, Yummy? How you doing? A lot of great friends coming on. So let me tell you, what is the, you tell me, what is the struggle? What is the struggle in your worship team when it comes to words, when it comes to lyrics? Is it an afterthought or is it something that you are proactively thinking? As you read this week's content by Mark James, when you are a member at WTTU.co, and by the way, every guest that comes on the show, they put out a corresponding article every Tuesday to match their Thursday show. So last week we had Paul Pastor. This week we got Mark James. Mika says our first struggle is practice. Okay. Practice, man, it not always does make perfect if you're not practicing, right? So how do you do that as a singer? How do you practice the words as a singer on your worship team? Yummy says this on Periscope, some songs are way too wordy and you may have little time to learn. Amen. Absolutely. I think that the practice time needs to be there every day, 10 minutes a day. And then also, if you find the songs that are too busy, too wordy, like you said, Yummy, then you're going to really need to budget out that time to practice. Now, for me, I'm accountable every week that I must not only know my music, but I must be going through it every week before I show up to a rehearsal and definitely before I show up to a worship service. There's been a time in the past that I actually had to cut the one song because I didn't know it well enough and it was my fault not to run through it. So what about when it comes to your worship planning? We talk about practicing at home, right, with our music and that's what we should be doing, but how often is it that you look at the words that you're practicing or worship leaders, the songs that you're planning each week? Now, it may be a great song, and it may be something that you have probably heard at somebody else's church or on YouTube or something, but provided that, when's the last time that you've really looked at those words and you've really asked the question, what are we singing? And should I choose this song? So, first question. Do you know what you are singing? Okay, do you know what you are singing? My pastor, we meet every other week to plan services out ahead of time. And he even asked me, he said, Brandon, you know, I love that one song, but did you look at that one word that was said? And he brought to my mind a scripture, and he said, you know, because I don't think when we sing that word, we really understand what it means. And I had to do a self-check. And I went back through the words, we're looking at the song, and I said, you know what, you're right. Uh, doctrinally, uh, this would be kind of loose. It could be a loose interpretation to somebody. Now, why is that important, you may ask? Because here's why. It's people that you're leading in your worship service. You have to understand that, no, I mean, well, I hope that your church does not go through the motions because you can say, well, they really don't pay attention anyway, so what does it matter? It matters everything because they should be paying attention. Now, provided, I don't think that every time we lead worship, it's our pedestal or platform to teach what worship is because you do that through demonstration as Jesus did in demonstrating the gospel. The senior pastor is really the one that should be teaching and preaching on what worship is. We as worship leaders and teams need to be facilitating what is being taught, what is being sung. So here's the reality. We have people in the pews that, yes, they probably do not know their Bible as well as you, maybe. They may even know it better than you. Who knows? Are you spending time in God's Word? That's another question. As you're leading your songs, 
yeah, we have a lot of people in our church that are going through the motions. So why does it matter? Because it is a good nurturing moment to pick songs that really do mean something. If you're just singing words and singing melodies just to sing it, just to sing it, then you're just singing songs. It's like what I was saying earlier in today's Snapchat. You're just singing another pretty melody. But what does it really mean? Here's what it means. I know there are people in my church that are going through tough and difficult times. And right now, I'm sure you're bringing to mind some individual in your, it could be worship team or within your church, that is desperate. They are desperately going through an incredible hard time. How are the words that you're singing, how are those words ministering to your people? Because I know when we sing songs, we're singing songs that are actually prayers. Prayers about God's healing. Prayers about God's victory. Prayers about God's redeeming love. Prayers about God's strength and the troubles. And how can we sing these songs and these kind of prayers if our minds are focused more on a, well, that's just a cool melody and that's just a cool video that I saw. But what does that have to do with your people? I think that we are leading our people astray if we're not leading them in sung prayer. And this is what it means to have the perspective and lens of Scripture because once we examine our songs through Scripture, we have a greater reality of what that author, what that song is trying to say. And if it's something that's not scripturally correct, you can see it right here. Mark James wrote about that in one of the songs that he wrote when you read today's article on our university site. And Mark had said that he had someone contact him. I want to ask him about this on Thursday, and I'm going to, I'm going to share, you guys, uh, share with you guys the full story. But Mark had said someone contacted him and asked, hey, can we do this song? But not only can we do this one song in our church, but would you mind changing the one line in this melody, the lyric? And Mark kind of looked at it like, and so you're going to get his response on Thursday. You want to hear the other half of that story of what he said and what actually he found out. I encourage you to look, re-look at your songs. If you're a songwriter, what are the words that you're actually writing? Because it could be, in the flow, it could rhyme, it could be great, but yet, if it's really not lining up with Scripture, then what kind of words are we saying in our churches? How are we speaking into our people? Because I can tell you, every week, I have someone that comes up to me and they say, hey, they don't say this, this is what I love, and I've had to get used to this too. They don't say, hey, great music, hey, great worship. Now, that used to spin me a long time ago, because then... The thought is, well, are you caught up more in what God is doing through you in worship, or are you just caught up in the, the sound of it? But people come to me weekly, and they say, hey, thank you for that song. Thank you for the words that were chosen to do this piece of music, because those words reminded me of who God is through this storm that I'm going through right now. When's the last time that you've had a conversation like that? If you haven't, don't wait for it. Don't wait for your people to come to you. How about you go to them? How about you go to your church? And yeah, I'm, I'm asking this before I do that. Mika says, Mika says this on uh, Periscope. Sometimes I create verses to existing songs because I believe the lyrics are everything. Awesome. You, Mika, thank you for that. And it's so good to see you here too, Mika. Tessie, what's up? Um, you have people coming to you every week, right? Or may maybe every other week, asking you, hey, can we do this song? Hey, why don't we sing more hymns? And you get that dreaded, awkward silence, right? Well, when's the last time that you went to a congregation member and you asked them, hey, what if we did this song? Let's put the shoe on the other foot for a second. Because we're so used to people coming to us and it puts us into a, it could be a defensive mode, right? Well, why are they telling me what songs I need to do? Why are they saying this about my song? You need to understand it's not your song, number one. It's their prayer. And number two, the reason why people are probably coming to you is because you may not realize, but they're giving you a prayer request. Have you thought about it that way? It, it, hey, that hit me sideways before. Maybe they're coming to you because they want to sing that old Keith Green song, Oh Lord, You're Beautiful, or How Great Thou Art. Or it could be a Jesus Culture tune that you sung a month ago. But 
when they ask you for those songs, maybe they are giving you a prayer request. And when they ask you those songs, ask them about it. Just say, why would, why would you want to sing that song? It'll probably freak them out. But ask the question. Tell me, what, what is it about that song that, that you like, that you want to sing? You may get a story out of those 10, 15 minutes that you were not aware of previously. But for you as a worship leader and team member, yeah, it's going to take time. It's going to take time because it takes relationship. And yes, you're going to have to listen to what they say and actually do a thing what we call minister. Because it's so easy for us to pass up people and go, oh yeah, okay, we'll get to that song next week. Oh yeah, that's a good request. Hey, thanks for that. But pause. Take the time to ask the questions. Or like I said before, why not you go to them? Why not you go to them and say, hey, how about we sing it as well with my soul? And and then ask them directly, do you like that hymn? Do you like that song? What is it about that hymn that you fall in love with? What is it about that one lyrical line? I can tell you right now, even in my own family, we are going through things right now that are just heartache and just tough. And I've been leaning on, <laughs> I wanted to say leaning on the ever, everlasting arms because that's, that's an old hymn that I used to sing. I'm thinking about new songs too, uh, a songwriter, a uh, great friend that I'm writing with right now who's on staff with us, Laura Marriott. She and I are writing a song together, and as I'm listening to the words that we're, that we're writing and what we're singing, I can hear the sweet melody of what God is doing. And it blows my mind to think that words can make such a critical impact on your prayer life, in your worship life. And it's like, I cling to the rock that is higher than I. I, I. There's so many songs that are about that one phrase, that one biblical reference. And so how are you drawing into those biblical references when you choose your songs? Because I'm telling you, it will revitalize your worship planning. And you may think, yeah, but Brandon, I'm not a pastor. All right, that's just something that I don't do. Well, why not? It doesn't mean that you're going to be a pastor. It doesn't mean that you're um, going to take over. But maybe what it does mean is that you become a lot more intuitive to the lyrics that you're singing. And just maybe your pastor will probably find that as a, an awesome style of partnership. Why not go to your pastor during your planning and just say, hey, can you tell me, more about your sermon. Can you know? I was thinking about this one song, and how does this fit in in that one passage that you're going to say? I mean, you never know what can happen, and I think that we as worship leaders, our job is to share the stage with our senior pastors. Our job is to be in partnership with them, because as you're delivering melodical songs of lyrics, they're delivering melodical sermons of words and of encouragement. So why not partner together? I mean, this topic that we're talking about can be spread out to so many different areas. Would you agree? So the question is, are you doing it? I got some more questions for you. Is it good enough to sing in your church? The song that you like, is it good enough to sing in your church? I mean, in other words, have you looked at the lyrics and thought, man, this, honestly, I don't know what the song is saying. Or there's really not a lot of biblical references here. And does that line up with your church doctrine? Does it line up with the Bible? Does it line up with what you believe as a worshiping body? Because there's been many times I thought to myself, looking at the lyrics and, uh, well, this is kind of watered down. Or I've looked at another song and thought, like, like the song I Believe, uh, Hill Song. I love that song. In fact, we do that. We, we are in a a liturgical contemporary church. And we do the song, I Believe, in, in place of reciting the creed because that's really what it is. It's a creed written to music. And I love what they've done with that song. And that song has special meaning for me. And when I first saw that song, it was like, that's it. I mean, in a way, it was kind of like, church is over, man. We can go home. I mean, when you sing a good song like that in your church, 
talk about what Scripture says in Ephesians 4, Ephesians 2. We are edifying the body every time when we lead them. Every time. So last question. How do you improve your filter? How do you improve your biblical filter? And I mean the filter that happens with every song. Uh, Terry says this, not all songs fit every church in terms of lyric style, etc. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Terry. Um, there are songs that we wouldn't do as a church because either the style or maybe the lyrical content or what have you. But you, the thing is, Terry, and I get what you're saying, the thing is for all of us, you need to do songs that identify your church, simply put, by doctrine, by lyric, by the scriptural perspective, right? And definitely by the style. And I mean, if look, if your drummer can't, you know, pull off a, a Fred Hammond song, don't do it, okay? <laughs> Just stay away, please. Uh, the same thing, if your lead guitarist can't do the, the new Matt Redman song or um, uh, Lincoln Brewster, okay? Nobody is Lincoln Brewster but Lincoln Brewster, okay? There's a reason why he does what he does. So you can still do the song, but what I'm saying is, is that if you don't have the caliber of musicians or singers to pull it off, either you uh, make it easier or pick something different. But that also, we, why bring this up, Brandon? Because that also has to do with the lyrical content of the songs that we sing. It's the same thing as saying, hey, I love that one guitar solo. It's the same thing as saying, as saying hey, I love, I love that one melody. But is that song in its entirety, how is it biblically? How does it line up with what we believe? And improve your biblical filter. How do you do that? How else would you do it? Spending time with the Lord Jesus and his word. Spending daily time with God. If you follow me on Bible.com, a lot of you have. And thank you so much, by the way. I, I just want to say thank you because my editor, uh, Michael Peeler, myself, we've been writing all these devotionals and it's been a year, and like, I think we're some, I don't know where we are now, but over 100,000 of you completed these devotional plans. We say thank you. And yes, to let you know, we are writing more, and uh, more will be coming out next year. So uh, I'll let you know when that happens. But the one thing that impresses upon me daily, and this is why I bring it up, because if you follow me on Snapchat, uh, that's at WorshipTT. Make sure you get that, at WorshipTT or you're following us on Bible.com, which is Worship Team Training, or my name, Brandon Dempsey, you will see the verses that I highlight daily in the Psalms and the Proverbs, Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, today was uh, 1 Chronicles 16, 1, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord a new song. You know, not, not an old uh, bad memory uh, or something that is just a humdrum, but a new song in the struggle, a new song about your faith, a new song about what God has revealed to you in your heart, what he's doing in your mind, what he's doing in your church, what he's doing in your family. Those are the kind of new songs that we are to sing. And it could be over a familiar melody. But th the fact is, when you're singing your songs, remember, you're singing prayers. When people come to you, and asking you about, hey, can we do this or that song? They may be asking you for a prayer request. They, they may be telling you, hey, this is what's going on in my heart, and I need help. And also, instead of them coming to you, why not you go to them and ask your church family, ask people in your team, hey, what do you think about this song? Hey, what do you think about uh, what God is doing with the last time that we maybe sung this hymn or this one song in church? How, how was that? Not, not did people participate, no, but what did it mean for people? Because, see, when you ask these kind of questions and you beef up your biblical filter and build it up, you're going to have a wealth of biblical vocabulary to share with your entire church and with your worship team. Because, again, when you're leading worship, you're not leading music. You're leading relationships. More about that is going to come this Thursday when you listen and hear Mark James. I can't wait. Mark James is joining us on the 14th this month, December, this Thursday at 11 a.m. Central. You want to be sure to join us for that. Become a member here at WTTU.co. 
It's very easy. Go check out the site and see what we have to offer. Also, look at the store page. You can find the webinar there. Also, uh, that's the webinar I'm speaking of about tomorrow with Mark Cole. So we got two Marks this week. We got Mark James on Thursday, Mark Cole tomorrow. Mark Cole tomorrow at 12 p.m. Central is going to be going through with us December, worship December music, uh, revitalizing our Sunday Christmas worship music. I can't wait. About how to rearrange things, make it simple, turn it upside down, and make it more creative for you and your worship team. So don't miss it. Tomorrow, 12 p.m. And everything else, you can go back to WTTU.co. Check out our events page. Look at all the topics that we're talking about. Things like this. Look, do you like hearing topics like this? Do you like studying the Word? Do you like finding out more of what you and your worship team can do? Do you like experiencing more skill that you can learn and how to nurture the heart? I'm telling you, all you need to do is go to that events page and see all the categories that we talk about. And then you can get all those categories and so much more when you become a member. The same thing when you go to worshipteentraining.com. we got free blogs up there too. You can check out our workshops, our mentoring, and everything else. But the whole point is that we are here to serve you, worship leader, worship team, audio tech, and pastor, because we believe in what God is doing through you. So guys, thanks so much again for coming back and listening, watching. You have our love and appreciation. Thank you so, so much. Join us this coming Thursday at 11 a.m. by becoming a member at WTTU. And also, be sure to join us back next Tuesday right here at 11 a.m. as we bring to you another great experience from a local guest worship leader that will be with us next week and a story and a heart that you can sing. And I pray that the words and the melodies that you sing this week are of Scripture to encourage you and lift your spirit and most of all, lift the people that God has called you to lead. Love you and see you back tomorrow, Thursday, and next week. Have a great one. See you soon.